All right, so this is going to be a spoiler review for Scream 6. Don't watch this video if you don't want to be spoiled or if maybe you're on the fence about watching it, you can, uh, you know, spoil yourself for so I don't know why you'd want to do that. But anyways, Scream 6 is a direct sequel to Scream 5. One year later, Tara and Sam are now living in New York. Sam has two jobs. Tara's trying to party and just sort of forget everything. However, she's got her core four, which is something they sort of push forward. The core four is four characters that survived Scream 5. So there's uh, Mindy, Chad, the twins, Sam and Tara. So the four of them are sort of like a tight-knit group and they all actually moved to New York City so they're sort of living there. But they all have new friends though, new roommates, new lovers, new suspects. Uh, uh, and so when they move over there, the film's opening starts off with a pretty violent kill. A woman is killed in an alley and then that person is revealed to be uh, also killed, which is a really, really strong opening, you know? You have like three kills immediately within the first like 10 minutes of the film. Pretty solid stuff. And then we uh, move on to some more drama stuff. Uh, one thing I didn't really like about the film is that they tried to introduce the whole uh, trauma PTSD healing thing because uh, Sam is seeing a counselor and he freaks out when um, she tells him about basically uh, what happened in Woodsboro uh, a year earlier. So she's like doing therapy, but uh, Tara doesn't want to. This isn't explored ever again in the film, so that's kind of a wasted opportunity. They do sort of explain a little bit when they reintroduce an old character from Scream 4. Kirby Reed is now an FBI agent, and she wanted to like sort of come back strong. So that's why she, you know, when, after she survived her stab, she uh, came back as an FBI agent. She wanted to be strong. She wants to take down any future ghost faced killers. So that's why. And then she has a cool pep talk with Tara later in the film. But in terms of like renewal or sort of like character growth in, in terms of like becoming stronger, like Sydney or Gail, the movie doesn't really quite get into that. You know, Tara and um, Sam, I mean, then Tara doesn't really like. Tara wants to forget, so she doesn't prep anything. However, Sam has like a taser and pepper spray at all times. So she's, and she keeps people, you know, away. From, and she keeps things secret from her friends too. Because she's got like a lover in another building. So the movie uh, has some great set pieces. Like amazing action set pieces. Like the, uh, the opening's okay. I think the four, the four main ones that are amazing is the grocery store attack, which we see a little bit in the trailer. That was amazing. That was so tense. Uh, they play like this little bit of music coming from a radio in the background. Great ambient music. Uh, you know, when, they, when they're stepping on stuff like glass or chips, the sound design's great. Such a suspenseful scene. It feels like something like you'd see in an action movie with just like a, a shooter scenario, a mass shooter scenario. And then we get the um, the bodega scene, which is probably the best scene in the movie, to be honest. It's Ghostface is able to get into their apartment and uh, attacks them. And then there's also uh, Gail's attack. Uh, uh, that was really, really stressful, really good because, you know, they play up the whole legacy characters can die and anyone can die in this movie. And then, of course, we got the train sequence, which is the last one before the finale. Uh, that was a good one too. A lot of uh, cool Easter eggs on the train. You can a little distracting though, because like uh, the movie's trying to like build up this sort of scene of like Mindy being separated with Ethan on on the train, and but just like every five seconds you see oh Michael Myers, Babadook, it, you know Pennywise, Midsummer. It's really hard to <laughs> a little bit distracting for that scene, but it's still a great tension filled scene. In terms of the drama. Uh, everything's okay. I mean, they, they do introduce the whole core four thing and like uh, the movie's pacing's pretty solid. It's a full on two hours, but I was not bored. I think the biggest problem I had still was that they're still going on about the whole uh, Sam is a psycho like her father legacy. I, I don't like that aspect because remember, Samantha's Carpenter's origin story is BS because in reality, if Billy Loomis had an illegitimate daughter He'd have to do it before he met Sydney, and the reason why he hates Sydney and wants to kill her is because her mother caused an affair with his father, and and so like he has that bone to pick with her. But if he's doing the same thing with another woman too, and and they're bringing back Skeet Ulrich again for like the small flashbacks, but they didn't do it right. And it's just it just I, I drop that storyline. I don't care. I, Samantha's a weak protagonist, not in terms of like physicality. I mean like. 
in terms of like potential. Like I don't, they, they play around with the whole, ooh, is she gonna snap and become ghost face? It's like, not really, we know she's not. I mean, if, unless they do that for the the eighth, uh, seventh film, then, then no. But like they keep kind of dancing around that because they got nothing else to do. I would have just preferred for just like a, a trauma, PTSD getting stronger. Like, you know, her doing some self-defense lessons or something or trying to, you know, fight those urges or something or like, you know, maybe have her stab the wrong person or something, but they, they never really do anything with that. I feel Tara is really underused. My friend also agrees that she's kind of the more charming character, but she's kind of like relegated to the side and she's got like small romance and everything. And um, I think that the biggest flaw of this movie is that near the beginning of the film, they're doing the whole rules thing again. They're explaining all the different rules of like, this is a sequel to a requel or whatever. That means legacy characters could die. That means, you know, the core four could die. None of that happens. No one in this movie dies um, from the previous films, ever. Only new characters die, and it's really, by, by the end of the film, when you realize it, it just feels a little bit deflating because, you know, it's almost like people start having plot armor. Like, I don't expect Sam or Tara to die, but they don't let anyone die. No one from any previous film dies in this film. So, that means Kirby survives, uh, the core four, uh, yeah, pretty much just only new characters die and that's dumb because it's just like it's like the Expendables 2 when they brought in uh, Liam Hemsworth to be like part of the team and then he dies within 10 minutes of the film You don't really feel anything because you just you just introduced him if they were to kill Terry Crews's character or uh, Randy Couture's then you'd be like, oh, no, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme has just killed um, You know one of the team and someone we know from the previous film the, the, the stakes are now higher, but instead it's like, oh, we brought in this new guy just to get him to you know, take a knife to the chest. So this movie does the same thing. It, 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 there's like 11 kills in this film, but all of them are just like superfluous, either bystanders or new characters or the killers. And it's just like, eh. Oh yeah, and the killers are pretty lame too. It basically, it's a revenge plot very similar to Scream 2. The villain is the cop. Quinn's dad faked her death. Uh, uh, Ethan is... Uh, her brother, and then the the two of them are actually Richie's family and the dad too. So they wanted to destroy Sam's life by creating the fake conspiracy theory online that she orchestrated the Scream 5 murders, uh, and then that caused her to run away and move to New York, and they want to basically uh, frame her for killing her sister and to, to for no reason really it's stupid because earlier in the film they attacked them in a grocery store with a shotgun what happens if he were to kill both of them with a shotgun that wouldn't clear Richie's name or anything so like it just seemed kind of dumb the, the, the villains didn't have a great motivation there's three of them and like there's no panache to the, the finale for example the finale takes place in this mausoleum of sorts a sort of shrine to all the ghost face killers and um, the corrupt cop villain, he basically was able to get a lot of uh, evidence and like mementos from the previous films like knives, uh, clothes, uh, you know, props, things from like the previous movies finales um, to, to create this sort of shrine to all the ghost face killers. So uh, there's like knives and stuff like littered throughout. I thought they would be throwing each other through display cases and trying to like grab weapons. Instead, they just pick up some random bricks and they're throwing them at each other and it's just like three versus two. And like there's a lot of pimping and preening and like people getting shot and not getting shot getting up. It's just eh. It's just exactly like the fifth one because it's the same writer duo. I didn't think that Scream 5's finale was amazing. It was too tongue in cheek, especially Gale and uh, Sydney. They just they have plot armor. They come in. They just they like get stabbed multiple times, shot multiple times, get up. It's like it, it stopped. It stops being interesting. Also, the lack of realism in this film too. Uh, what's his name? Chad gets like mega stab like like 10 times at least and he's just fine at the end and it's like a running joke now it almost feels like it's it doesn't care like it's an inside joke that he just never dies like he didn't he got like his spine like severed in the fifth film and he was just like he gets up and he's like oh, i'm okay or he doesn't get up and he's okay he's just he's just in an ambulance at the end of the movie and you're kind of like surprised that he made it and the same thing happens in this film too it's like a running joke and it really takes away the realism because like Dewey got stabbed in the second film uh, the same way that Chad did in the fifth and Dewey had like a pinched nerve or like a severed nerve and he was walking around with a cane or like with his hand all messed up and then in this movie like the young guy is just like sh shaking it off a year later like he'd be in physical therapy for life. So the, the realism takes a dive for the finale at least because people are like shooting each other and stabbing each other multiple times and surviving and they, they really can't 
explain it. I mean, you could explain maybe medical technology has ex is a, has a, um, what's the word has progressed since in 20 years since the first Scream. But you know, I don't I don't really buy it. You know, sometimes the movie lacks realism a little bit. But you know, it, it's nice to see all the, the the ride was fun. Is what I'm saying. Like I enjoyed the movie overall. But the finale kind of takes the wind out of your sails because once the masks come off, it becomes less fun because usually it's a underwhelming and they didn't do anything in the mausoleum for a cool set piece. All the other set pieces are way better than the, the finale. So, you know, Scream 6 is a solid sequel, but it definitely does uh, pull its punches because it doesn't kill any like major characters. Um, you know, it's uh, it almost feels like just like a, a movie made as a placeholder. Like nothing majorly big happens in this film. We're not going to have like a pregnant person in the next film. We're not going to have like a marriage or anything. We're not going to have a major death or anything. It just, it just feels kind of like one of those sequels in the middle of a film that feels superfluous in a franchise, which is okay by me because you know. I would like to see more Scream films, I'm a huge fan, but that's just the way it is. So if you've seen my non-spoiler review, I gave it a six and a half, uh, but I just want to get into more plot details because, you know, I'm a huge fan of the franchise and I just want to get some, some thoughts off my chest. So those are my thoughts on Scream 6.